Hey friends, my name's Georgie. It is such a pleasure to be welcoming you to the Just Breathe podcast, where I'll be talking all things breathing to help empower you guys to use the power of your breath to harness your bodies and minds. In today's episode, I'll be chatting to Dr. Mohammed Enyat, aka Dr. E. Dr. E is a GP, alternative medical doctor, CEO, and one of the UK's top biohackers. Dr. E and I had an incredible conversation about how optimizing your health always starts with the breath, about the detrimental effects of overstimulation in today's society, and why autonomy over your own health is the key to wellness. Dr. E really has some incredibly powerful insights to share and I'm so excited for you to listen in on our conversation. If you haven't already, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the Just Breathe podcast. It all starts with the breath. So let's keep getting that message out there and growing our breathing community. All right, let's jump right into today's powerful, powerful conversation. I'm so excited for you to listen in. I hope you enjoy it. This is episode 18 of Just Breathe with Dr. E. Hey, Dr. E, how you doing? Welcome to the Just Breathe podcast. Awesome to have you on. Hey, Georgie, how are you? Great yeah. to be here. Let's all, do this. All good. I'm loving the background. Uh, loving, yeah. loving the beautiful clinic behind. It, it looks amazing. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, it looks, it looks really nice in the picture, right? I mean, this is, <laughs> yeah. to be fair, this is a picture. It is a virtual background, but it's yeah. actually a picture of the space. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Where the, where the photographers sharpen up things, but it does Yeah, look it really looks like you're there. It's, it's awesome. And I love, honestly, yeah. I love um, the clinic. It always reminds me of uh, James Bond. Like, you know, when they go underground and you've got all the kind yeah. of like cool... Tech- I get that a lot, actually. You get, Do you? Get, uh, yeah, the Batcave. Yeah. Um, the Iron Man, Tony Stark's Q. lab. Yeah, yeah Q's lab. Um, for sure for sure change my name to dr q (laughs) yeah that'd be awesome um but listen i'd love to jump in and sort of tell your story a little bit more and how lms health came about because i'm sure there's a really awesome story there about uh the development of lms uh so could you tell us a little bit more yeah i'll tell you a little bit about myself i mean um i i i'm a qualified gp Mm -hmm for about seven eight years now and um and uh, and essentially i uh, started i should turn my phone on silent <laughs> um, uh, so, so i started my medical career basically looking at looking to be uh, a surgeon actually fascinated ah. in surgery um and it took a bit of a turn i mean i did i did a trauma surgery placement in abroad and i loved it i thought it was fascinating um, however, I think by nature, I was always a bit more of a generalist, a bit more of a polymath. Mm-hmm. And I, I became also interested in how to drive uh, interesting new things that are happening into the health system. Right. I did an a undergrad degree in health management. And uh, my thesis was around the stem cell industry, which took me to the US, I think in 2007, mm-hmm. where, I, um, where I went to the stem cell lab. And I was like, wow, like, this is fascinating we're not really taught this in traditional medicine about how we have this regenerative self-healing pathways built within us. Yeah. We're, we're really taught in a different paradigm. So that opened my eyes. That was the first thing that opened my eyes. Then I went through, you know, working in the hospitals and, and um, uh, I did a, f- a fellowship, a Darzi fellowship where I um, looked at driving innovations into the health system. I worked at Pentaville Prison for a little while, trying to connect up the oh, prison wow. with the primary care trust there, yeah. uh, Whittington, to try and connect them up through telemedicine and um, worked with diabetic patients and uh, was part of this fascinating and excellent initiative, which was um, having expert patients 
teach other patients that were newly diagnosed and how to manage their diabetes. And I was like, wow, wow this is really, really, very, really, really interesting as well. And so I think all of those things combined, I decided to end up becoming a GP. And while I was um, training to be a GP and working in inner city, East London, Tower Hamlets, seeing that actually how much was I able to truly move the needle with my patients mm. uh, was, you know, I was struggling, you know, yes, you can, in your 15 minute consultations, you can see them a couple of times, but, you can kind of stop progression of disease to some degree, but can you really uh, reverse diseases? Can you really prevent diseases? And are you yeah. free to prescribe and test, whether prescribing testing or medication mm. or intervention to, to, um, to, to treat someone as a whole? And, you know, there's, those are some of the challenges that I faced. Um, hence, uh, and then you know, at the same time, my sister, uh, who's a de cosmetic dermatologist, came up with this kind of Medispa concept that she wanted to bring in from the US. She was board, dual board certified UK and US. Yeah. Um, and had a really refreshing approach to external aging. You know, how do we reverse the signs of external aging, but in a regenerative approach? How do you stimulate your own skin to start healing mm -hmm. and behave like it did five years ago, your hair follicle cells, et cetera, et cetera. And so we started creating LMS and um and uh and these these really cool um uh, kind of cosmetic dermatology approaches and reversing aging from the outside in yeah and seeing how you could really manipulate um cellular pathways that slow down for example our hair follicles so then understanding the hair follicle cycle mm -hmm. um and uh, and then the skin cell cycle we were able to kind of uh, come up with interventions or combinations of therapies and uh, be able to like create these protocols to stimulate your hair cells to behave like they, they did five years ago or wow. your skin cells to behave like they did five years ago and ultimately to get your skin to look younger. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, this is really interesting. You know, obviously yeah, fascinating. Yeah, that's fascinating. Really yep. interesting journey. And I was like, can, wait a minute, can we do the same thing on the inside? And you know, I had a lot of patients who are going to places like, you know, wellness centers in Austria, Germany, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the ones you may have heard about and spending a week or two there doing detoxification protocols and losing weight and feeling great. But it was always just treated like a retreat, you know, like a health and wellness retreat. Yeah, like then, two weeks at a time and then that's it. Correct. Yeah. Rather than a way of life. And I was like, okay, you know, let me, one, let me understand, you know, what is detoxification? Not something that we're, you know, we're taught in a medical sense, but, you know, what are these nutritional approaches to detoxification? Why is that important? So I started yeah. diving into that, uh, looking at the kind of, I think they were very much pioneers in wellness medicine in Germany and Austria, actually, uh, from the 60s, 70s, 80s. Mm. And, um, and then still came across functional medicine um, as I started to look into the kind of role of nutrition and studied at the IFM Institute of Functional Medicine in the US, where it was like, oh my God, this can't be true. You know, some of the claims they're making, this sounds really wild. Mm. And for the first time being in a um, learning environment with nutritionists, with naturopaths, with osteopaths, with physicians, and I was like, you know, growing up in a traditional medical system, apprehensive, you know, a bit like you know this is this for real you know um, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Almost, too good almost to be like, true almost like an inherent uh arrogance yeah you know, looking back honestly you know an inherent arrogance that um where uh we we are we are trained in this kind of really defined health model where it's very defined the osteopath does this more osteopaths yeah. aren't even the traditional health system but let's say an ot does this a physio does this yeah a nurse does this a doctor does this and then the different types of doctors stick within their realms to do yeah this. yeah yeah you know and and uh, that was an eye-opener and being able to be in a room over a cup over a week or so with these different practitioners who had really different realms of experiences learning functional medicine and seeing going back to the core science was really cool and then it was a bit like okay now i need to go and apply this and does this stuff really work yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so that um then i started to you know put together you know found um 
some experts in the space from the US. I started to work with them as mentors. They were my mentors in applying yeah. this type of medicine with patients, um, the kind of protocols, understanding the pitfalls. Because you know, it's uh, like anything, um, if you're guided through it, it's better. Not knowledge doesn't make you an expert. Experience makes you an expert. Yes, um, and, um, I agree with that. Oh my God. And, um, and experience in the health space is applying knowledge on people. Mm -hmm. And the wonderful thing about people is they're so variable. Yeah. Different goals, different states, different ambitions, different ways of life, different, you know, so yeah, variable. Yeah, yeah. And this and the challenge is distilling down those key patterns to be able to then create strategies that are personalized for people, because that's ultimately uh, gonna it is what's gonna move the needle with people alongside personalizing the approach what i mean by that is hand holding can you develop a model that sees people meeting them at their level of need and their level of life because life is up and down it's not it's more impermanent. than up and down it's in yeah. and out it's like every dimension it's so impermanent so variable yeah. right yeah yeah, and yeah. One, one minute we're in the best motivation state and then the next day that we're hitting this procrastination wall is just one example mm. or one day we're you know in fantastic body shape and the next month we're kind of not and one month we're sleeping amazing or one day we're not so yeah all of these things and uh, so yeah so started to apply that um, uh, led by mentors and saw wow like you can really you can really change people's state of health and um, people that weren't initially like you know have worked with kind of autoimmune conditions then we started to apply it to people can this state, this type of medicine and healthcare be applied to pre-disease states mm. uh, through the lens of what I'd studied previously in the backgrounds of stem cell and this regenerative medicine applied uh, to aesthetics, um, saying, okay, what are the processes that produce health and what are the processes that slow down as we get older that ultimately lead to inefficient health? And can we start to identify people in the inefficient health state state? To then make it take them back to the efficient health state pre-disease. Yeah. Mm. So then we started mapping out the kind of processes that were important to us that we thought were the most important, combining functional medicine, so root cause medicine, which looks at the interplay of your digestion, nutrition, hormones, micronutrients, yeah. um, immune system, the real-time physiology stuff, that things are the systems and processes that are going on at any given time. Combine that with this longevity science lens, which was okay. What slows down as we age, um, stem cell production, detoxification pathways, or uh, accumulation of inflammation. Started to put them together and say, okay, how do we now attach data points to those that that biology, bio, bio, set of biological processes that we want to look yeah, at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looked at different labs around the world, found the different labs that were evidence based that we thought were interesting, cutting edge. Um, and came together with different programs and profiles of testing that we thought were important, attached to that different wearable measurements that we thought were, were important, and then different potential therapeutics. Mm. Um, and so we, we started to evolve this model of care, um, which uh, can take people, someone wherever they're at, not mm. from just if they're coming in with complex autoimmune conditions that they've tried everything. And those patients, you know, um, you know, amazing to work with it takes time to move the needle with them because their 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 system has adapted to becoming over time imbalanced in many yeah. ways and yeah. so and then at the other side um regular i say no regular but you know what i mean like people that don't have disease states um but still want to get better energy mood sleep focus digestion yeah and an extension of that which has happened more recently is you know, athletes coming to me and say, hey, actually, can this stuff be applied to me? Well, yeah, hell yeah, it can. Let's do it. And yeah. working with kind of a few athletes now to, to, to um, see how we can introduce recovery, performance enhancing protocols, optimizing their biology. And, you know, it's surprising that um, athletes are not looked at from a biological perspective completely in depth. You know, we're not looking at their uh, metabolites of energy production pathways within mm -hmm. our cells we're not looking at how efficient digestion absorption is we're not s serially doing detoxification protocols with them these are the things that you know 
are really nice to apply to athletes because they're so disciplined um, in terms yeah. of how they eat, move, very yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, rigorous in the, and have the, you know, they're, they're a really unique subset of, of people, right? Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what makes them in many ways superhuman, you know, and that's why we respect yeah. and generally aspire and look up to them across, across um, all breadths and walks of life. Yeah, hundred percent. I actually, you know, I actually wonder how much of the population is living anywhere near to an optimal quality of life that they could be could be living at. You know, and I, I don't think it's many um, purely because of a lack of knowledge. Like you're saying, all this yeah. is a, that that well, knowledge. Yeah, no, I think knowledge is a major thing, um, and knowledge. Look, I think the reality is we've grown up in a society for many years where our health has been outsourced to the health system. Yeah. Okay. What I mean by that is we're not, we've not been educated within society. We've not been empowered with the knowledge that we can yeah. apply personally to say, I can take control of my health. Yeah. Okay. yeah I can have autonomy that... over my own health. Right. Listen, let's, put yeah. that in, let's put that into real life examples. I'm not sleeping very well. I have bad energy. My mood's low. I'm feeling yeah. down in the dumps. Mm -hmm. um, who do I go to? I'm going to go to my GP. Yeah. I'm going to go to my GP. And as a GP, I've seen patients that will come in yeah. and say, you know, I'm down in the dumps, tearful, et cetera. This is going on. This is going on. The GP will say, okay, well, let's try, you know, try maybe try psychotherapy. Let's yeah. maybe look at one or two markers if you're lucky, especially in the relationship. You know, let's maybe yeah. look at your thyroid. Um, uh, let's maybe look at your iron levels that might, or your vitamin D now. That's very commonly uh, tested. Yeah. Um, but very, and then you know, let's think about antidepressants. A short course if none of that works, or you know, if we can't find the answer from this basic testing then we, you know, then we need to consider, and it's a problem for you, you need to consider a pill. But that pill is not just going to be a one-off pill that you take once today and just see how you get on and not take it tomorrow. That pill is something you've got to take regularly. In fact, you've got to sign up to taking it for three to six months because if you don't take it for more than six weeks, ironically, or a few weeks, ironically, it actually can make your mental health even worse. Um, so, wow. you know, so uh, we, yeah. have, we have been educated as a society and as healthcare givers to outsource our health to the health yeah. system. I've grown up in an environment, you know, and um, it, with my parents, I just remember, and in my community, hearing elders say, yeah, you know, when I'm, when it's my time, it's my time. When I'm, you know, when, it, when it, you know, when it's, when I'm sick, it's, you know, it's just my time. I need to go, you know, and uh, real, obvious lack of autonomy in the way they're describing their own health you're healthy until you're sick okay <laughs> and um when it's your when it's when you're sick it's your time it's your time you know and so that whole mindset of that okay i'm i know that i need to engage with the health system when i'm sick yeah and that classification of being sick is defined by the health system yes and, the, and it's it's defined by how we're educated around disease not educated around health yes what we're, what, 100%. We're, what, what we're trying what we're trying to do now is is um and what we're doing is saying okay no let's start with the redefinition of health being yeah. a state of vitality not absence yeah. not absence of disease and let's extend everything from the symptoms that we talk to patients about um that ultimately lead to vitality so we're talking to people about energy we're talking to people about um, and breaking energy down into like the timing of energy, that how long you have the energy for. Yeah. But we're talking about digestion in different ways, not talking about digestion from a disease way, which is, oh, do you have blood in your stool? Do you have mucus in your stool? Mm -hmm. Do you have protracted diarrhea? Um, okay, we need to investigate this with endoscope, colonoscope, um, stool testing, see if there's blood in your mucus in your stool. We're looking at, no, do you have any signs of mild uh, inflammation in your gut lining leaky gut or food sensitivities that are driving that or microbiome disturbances or lack of production of digestive enzymes you know you can start to see the difference between working in a disease state mindset which is looking for pathology or 
looking at the processes that produce health, right? Yeah. And it's been a real amazing experience so far. I'm genuinely super blessed to have been able to invest um, in developing this out with the team and take, you know, take uh, and, and to be able to do that. Very blessed, you know, and we've um, and we're continuing to do that. And what we want to do is and we're creating in-house education programs that can support health practitioners wherever they're coming in from, whether they're physicians or nutritionists or allied health workers to be able to help navigate that, you know, like, okay, what are the systems, what are important systems that produce health? What are the tests associated with that? What are the patterns of recognition we want to look for? And the aim, you know, the long-term aim is to help demonstrate um, and contribute back to, um, to, this, to, the, to, to the healthcare world and say, hey, this is how, we, how, we, how we've been going about it. Um, and this is the system to educate health practitioners. This is the testing. This is the nutraceuticals or the therapies that we might we've been approved, uh, um, using. And now let's you know we've been, and this is the data and the evidence to go along with it. Yeah. Um, and hopefully build build more m- momentum in there because right now there's a real disconnect um, between um, the healthcare system and being healthy. Yeah, and, yeah, hundred percent. It's, it's not because it's not be, it's not because you know physicians and healthcare practitioners um, don't want to be working in that way. It's for many reasons, including some of the barriers to entry to engage with this with this way of working, which are around the way we look at evidence base within healthcare, mm. um, which are around um, the uh, the the way we design. Uh, specialisms within healthcare and and the freedom that we give our physicians to treat a person as a whole we just don't give that freedom yeah Yeah. Um, and so what I want to do hopefully over time and is to encourage young doctors and older doctors but particularly I think the young doctors who um, younger doctors who are you know you knew GPs to start thinking and embracing and going on their learning journeys and supporting their learning journeys and saying, Hey, actually, you know, th- these are the ways to go about it. This is, you know, come and, jo- you know, come and learn about it with us if you wanted to, or, and, or go ABC. And we've, and, you know, bypass and support that journey from knowledge to expert through a training program, Yeah. through a training program that sees them supervised and applying this, that sees us taking the evidence and sharing it. Um, and, hopefully inspiring others to continue to try and continue from the platform to learn more and dive a bit deeper and um and yeah so you know we we're we're you know very blessed to to be able to to set our set our mission as uh and uh, as a long-term mission you know like you know we're not this is this is like a 10 20 year plan it's a marathon Uh, not a sprint hey it's a marathon not a sprint and um yeah i've been talking loads so i'm going to take a breath <laughs> no no no. i honestly on it there's so much that you've said that's that's resonated with me and and resonated with with the breath work i do as well of course i mean because that is so foundational and you know it's it's not something you you go to a pharmacy you, you can't go and, and pick up breath from boots um you know it's there it's within you and all you have to do is learn uh to access it and you can harness your own body and mind using something as simple as the breath um, i think it's such a powerful tool like yeah I think it's a powerful tool really powerful tool just yeah. to be able to just help people understand that yeah. you can change your state yeah you i mean very even, quickly change your state yeah and that is that's a very powerful and underrated mm-hmm. um paradigm because as soon as people can understand that they're like what else can i do to change my state yeah i don't need to, you know is there something i can do to improve my energy is there something i can do to improve my irritability is there something I can do to improve my sleep, right? Yeah. And I, I love that it starts with the breath because we're constantly breathing. Without breath, we're not energizing our mitochondria. When you know we're we're you know, we're nothing. You know, without oxygen, we are yeah. nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah. We we no longer exist. And well, exactly. What I, what I 
what I like people to understand is that the body is a vehicle. Yeah. It's is you know it's a vehicle for our consciousness. Yeah. Is and we're part conscious and we're part subconscious. And yeah. the subconscious part is a is is a wonderful, amazing uh, set of reflexes. Yeah. And patterns. Yeah. Imprinted in our biology, chemistry, electricity, electrical pathways, and um, actually, if we can start to be more conscious of that maybe we could start to think about nurturing this vehicle more because yeah. when you start to think about, about it as a vehicle, people understand that analogy. You know, a lot of people drive, a lot of people have cars or some form, form of trans- transportation, right? Yeah. They understand that, you know, your car needs to go in for an MOT every year. And what, yeah. what are they looking for in an MOT? They're looking for, you know, the tread on your tires. They're looking mm. for how much pollution is coming out of your exhaust pipes. They're looking yeah. at, you know, basically, is your car road worthy? Yeah, and, 100%. Right? And, and that's ultimately what the health system is looking at you in the yeah. same way, right? You go to your doctor, is your car, human body, going to be breaking down anytime soon? Yeah. Is it road worthy? Or are you going to have a heart attack any minute now? Or are you going to have a stroke any minute? Or have you had a stroke and we need to repair it? Yeah. But that is what the traditional health system is, right? And people yeah, understand sure. that. Like, yeah, it's true, you know, it does feel like an MOT. Mm. now if you have a car and you spent 10 15 5 whatever thousand pounds on a car you look after it usually you know like you yeah. you will you will get it washed you'll validate it yourself you will change the spark plugs you'll change the air filters the oil filters the uh, as part of the service you know you will service it and maybe you'll take it to the garage where it's manufactured to get a, a more in-depth service when you look after your vehicle, it works better. It works for longer. You get more, it's more responsive to what you need from it. Yeah. You put your yeah. foot down on the accelerator. It's going to respond better. You push your foot on your brakes. It's going to brake better. Um, you look, you put it in a nice environment. You know, you keep it in a garage. It's going to, whereas if you run it on bold tires in extreme conditions, it's going to break down more, right? Yeah. The tires will go, your exhaust will interrelated. You know, you'll start going to, you start to get, you're going to start to have problems with your suspension and, and that will cause your engine to work harder and that's going to cause your pistons to go. So people understand that analogy. And yeah. that analogy needs to be applied more and more to the human body. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I was talking to a friend yesterday. We were talking about athletes that have really long careers. And, you know, some athletes like, you know, footballer, famous footballer, Ibrahimovic, amazing. You know, he's going into his late 30s still playing phenomenal football and looking back at his career where um, in his late 20s he was talking about preserving his body mm. on the pitch so not running it down to the ground in every like being smarter in the way and he was he took some criticism for it because it's like oh you're not working hard enough on the pitch but he would still be producing outputs and goals because he you know focused on working on the mind and thinking through the game yeah it just it's an example where if you nurture your vehicle and you don't push it through too many extremes because we know that extreme sports also reduces longevity yeah then you can have your you can have longevity for a longer period to increase your health span 100 percent. yeah so, um, how can you come back to that homeostasis again and again and again coming back i think people forget actually that it is all about that balance i think especially in the western world there is a mentality and i'll be interested in your opinion on this of that it's one or the other like you said you are either healthy or you're diseased what about that in between part like with the analogy of the car where if you have a bit of a rusty rundown car um you're still going to get to your destination but it's probably going to take you a lot longer you might have to stop a lot more you might incur a couple problems but if you're in a tesla that's sparkling new or whatever and the engine is running at optimal capacity then that journey is going to be a whole lot smoother a whole lot more comfortable and on the sort of lower um lower stakes of health i suppose that everyday health and i actually think that's where the the crucial part is that a lot of people are missing especially with breathing like we were saying where something like nose to mouth breathing simply by breathing through your nose instead of your mouth you can retain up to you know 40 percent of moisture. you can lose up to 40 percent of moisture just by breathing through your mouth so that moisture you're retaining by breathing through your nose 
that can stop a lot of bronchoconstriction, that can stop sports-induced asthma, that can have so many huge differences. You can harness nasal nitric oxide, um, you know, which is going to dilate those blood vessels, which is also a great protector against those pathogens and bacteria, really important during the times of COVID. And just all these little tiny things, you know, by breathing through your nose, you're activating the diaphragm, you're slowing the breath, meaning you're going to have a calmer mind, your breathing is going to be more efficient, blah, blah, blah. It's and it's tiny, it's a tiny shift. But I think these, these little things at the, I suppose, lower stake level of health, where you're not at the point where you're diseased, or have a, a huge ailment on your hands, um, that actually it, it's these sort of general everyday things that are the most important things to focus on maintaining the engine of that car you know mm, I'm, yeah absolutely and i think i think you are, you have an absolutely critical role to play um in terms of educating people the yeah. different tools and when to apply them and how to apply them right yeah one of the most beautiful things about breathing is also that it takes you if you concentrate on your breathing you can very quickly detach from your external environment and you can recenter very quickly and you know we're yeah. often in this society that's that's in this modern age not society where which is a global issue now um we're bombarded yeah bombarded and every constantly day. stimulated and Every, you know, more than every day, every minute, and that's yeah, you're right, increase, you're right, right, like emails, right. WhatsApps, TikTok, Instagram, daily, tick, <laughs> wow, like you know, yeah. wow, 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 you know, and so all of those, from a biological perspective, have pulsations of biological processes that get activated. Your stress response, your sympathetic nervous system pathway. All of that takes up energy, right? Like yeah. That takes up energy. And then when your energy is not available for healing and it's being used up by being constantly activated, you're losing balance between the healing and and uh, the fuel creation that we need for, for productivity and doing things we want to do. Do you think a lot of us that, are overstimulated? Leads, 100%. Huh. Yeah. 100%. And that in itself will drive disease it drives it drives hormonal dysregulation yeah. drives metabolic issues because once you're constantly stimulated with cortisol production you need to keep your blood sugar high because your body's like oh, i just need to stay awake and alert i need blood sugar therefore you start to can start to develop insulin resistance and this metabolic issues right yeah um and insulin when it's high is one of the most inflammatory molecules in the body and you know inflammation is the new currency of medicine and we're going to hear about it more and more. It's what drives deterioration of your processes within your body. For the first time, we're seeing uh, life expectancy go down. Wow. In the last, you know, that's, we, we've gone past that point now. So this overstimulation, the processed foods, the environments we live in, the screen time, all of that is, is, is a melting pot. And I think the breath is a really powerful tool that if we can help people connect to their breath very quickly, they can remove themselves from a lot of states yeah. instantly, yeah. absolutely instantly. And what's yeah. really beautiful about the modern world now is that let's use the advancements in technologies to our advantage. Let's get wearables that can show us the improvements and yeah. then we can get that feedback loop and say, oh my God, yeah, my resting heart rate went down when I when I started to breathe deeper. And, and I took my, and I also noticed that I felt less stressed and those thoughts started to go away and, you know, these are the skills that we need to be teaching to children in schools. These, these Absolutely. Are schools, you know, Absolutely. These are the skills that we need to be teaching our teachers. We need to be teaching yeah. our physicians. We need to be mm. teaching everyone should have these core skills to say, okay, how do I get into a focused state? How do I get into a relaxed state? How do I get into, you know, a, the ability to control stimuli for that coming that are just making my mind turn so much, you know, all these thoughts going on in my head yeah 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 100 percent. yeah breath is important 100%. so you start i think i think starting starting with breath is the easiest one to start with yeah i and agree then, i agree and then and then like, you can move on to nutrition you can move mm. on to kind of like personalizing yeah. movement patterns and getting out into nature and grounding and all these other cool stuff that costs zero um yeah. and you can do yourself 
And, you know, just, you know, just like you, like we, we really want to support people to understand this, that starting point. Yeah. You can change your state. You don't yeah. need to feel distressed. No. You don't need to feel, you know, you don't need to feel this way. Like, and obviously when you're in that place, you can't, you, it's very difficult to, to know how you, how you can feel apart from being in that state because you end up in this circle and your biology ends up taking you and that drives that circle. Yeah. Uh, you know, your, your sympathetic nervous system, those physiological reflexes yeah. keeps you in that state, that yeah. wired state, that wired yeah. state then causes you to be tired because all your yeah. energy and production goes to those pathways. And so then you get this tired and wired state. Mm. Then, you're, then you're looking for coffee. You're looking for stimulants. You're looking for sugar, things to keep yeah. you up, sugar to keep you going. And then you're just, you know, you're, you're, you're prop, you're I've forgotten the word, but you're basically propagating, or you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I know um, what you mean. Yeah, uh, yeah, you, you're just feeding that state, right? Absolutely. And I think yeah. that is the biggest gift we can give from this podcast. I hope. Yeah, to, I, I agree. To the listeners and the listeners to really just have confidence that hey give one of the breath works on on the on georgie's youtube a go take five minutes out of your day mm. um and do it when you're when you want do it when you want to change your state yeah Try it when you want do it, maybe do it before you first thing in the morning before you look at your things use it as a time to just like center and don't think about anything just concentrate on your breath and just notice how you feel afterwards notice how you feel how your decision making is better how your communication with people around you is better how coming out of that wired state affects so much around you. You know, it affects your relationships. It affects your thinking. It affects your digestion. But, 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 and you know, like you know, that is, is, yeah. it's really beautiful. That's why I'm here talking to you, Georgie, because yeah. you know, I want to give you confidence to keep doing what you're doing oh, and you. to keep building out this suite of strategies and diving into the science and, and learning it and applying it on people in different states. Yeah. Absolutely. Get that, to build on your experience and to become more of an expert because, you know, it takes 10 years to become an expert. And, oh, yeah, and, or more. and you know, we're, what, we're, what, we're, what we're shy of in this modern age is where we want to be stimulated quickly and get, you know, created this immunity. Instant book, gratification, is, right? Right. We created this immunity book with 90 pages at a time of COVID. And I was just shocked, you know, published it and disseminated it through as many channels as we could for free. I was just surprised that how many people came back to me and said, Doc, can you just like make it into a one minute video and just like five bullet points? I was just like, wow, like, no, I'm not going to do that. But I did create some videos to try and engage more people. But I was like, no, I'm not going to distill this information down. Like I, people, people should want to, not want to, but people should importantly start to take time out and read about things they want to, not just take things at the surface, five bullet points. Yeah. That is, the key points mm -hmm. because on instagram and social media in this modern day and age you know it's we can get our sources of information from a thousand places from those five bullet points and it's very easy to recirculate those right and you see a lot of those information being recirculated by lots of different people yeah what is what what we need to understand is that actually how do we find the people that are the experts and how do we go on our own learning journey start reading take time out to read super important you know like yeah. don't get your don't don't drive all your knowledge and or try to get your knowledge from social media because that's not no. the source of information no. it's a source of inspiration yeah like inspiration great source of inspiration not information. great source of storytelling great source of he people he he hearing people's story and what can be done amazing and you know sometimes some people are fantastic they write really in-depth captions they have and that you know yeah. use that to stimulate your own learning journey you know, that's why you're here on this podcast amazing you're listening to a podcast and you, you, you t you're tuned in to here to spending time maybe hopefully you're going for a walk hopefully you're, yeah. you're doing something then you're not or cooking that's brilliant time to listen to podcasts i've found yeah yeah and, but let this be the inspiration correct. to and be the the uh, yeah, jump off rightly. for exploration for, else, for trial right inspiration for trial go try something now yeah. go try a breath work you're listening to the podcast go do a breath work take 10 minutes out find mm -hmm. a nice quiet spot somewhere go through the list on youtube um, that georgie's put together of great videos see how you want to feel and just 
develop that insight into your body and say, oh, wow, like I, maybe I didn't feel it. Maybe I didn't feel it. Yeah. How did I feel? And yeah. notice those things. A hundred percent. Two things I, I want to I wanna jump on from, from what you said. Um, and, and I could talk for hours uh, with you about all this stuff. We're going to have to definitely do a part with, two. I, sure. I know we're going to have to do a part two. Um, but I just, I love how you're saying so much about how it starts with the breath, because actually it couldn't be more important um purely because as well what you're saying about this overstimulation of course that causes dysfunctional breathing over breathing breathing in excess of our metabolic requirements and that alone breathing out too much carbon dioxide we're going to decrease our breathing efficiency there's not enough oxygen actually making it to those tissues and organs and then You've got less energy, you've got your insomnia, you feel lower. It's this vicious, vicious, vicious cycle. And so if you're getting up and going, do you know what? I'm just gonna try and do a workout. I'm gonna try and eat differently. Amazing, amazing intention. But if you are working out and breathing dysfunctionally, then you are not serving your body as best you could in your journey to becoming more healthy and well, because you haven't, it's like building a house on top of a puddle, a muddy puddle. You know, it's just gonna sink because if your breathing is off, be a big just, puddle. yeah, it's gotta be a damn big puddle. <laughs> if your breathing is off, then you're not, you're never gonna get the most out of that workout. That, yeah. You could actually right. be causing your body more, more stress and more overstimulation than it needs because right. you haven't okay. got that, that foundation. Correct. Yeah, I think breathing is key. You're hundred percent right. How many breaths do we do a day? Just over twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five thousand you know? breaths a day. Well, it depends on the person, um, but you know, yeah, around course, yeah. around that. Yeah. yeah. And COVID's def definitely shown us a spiritual disease. It's shown how you know it mostly just affects um, when it gets bad. It affects your lungs, and it affects the expansive capacity of your lungs. And therefore, that's why people need to have uh, ventilatory support. It it shows that you know, um, you know, we should the lungs, breath, and the mechanism of transferring oxygen from our lung tissue into our into the blood supply that surrounds the lungs, and the blood supply being the plumbing that delivers that oxygen to all of our trillions of cells. And mm. um, that whole pathway is super important. And what does the oxygen actually do? It goes into our cells. And each cell has a mitochondria, which takes oxygen and makes fuel for the cell. Um, it's a bit like, it's, and engines work in the same way. Engines mm. take fuel and combust it through air to make energy. Um, so if there's ways to optimize delivery of that oxygen, which there are, um, through training your 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 yourself your airways to be able to expand more your diaphragm to be able to expand more to take in more breath to more lighten air, your breathing to make your breathing um, lighter which will decrease your respiratory rate yeah and um, your and, and your respiratory um, effort yeah. your volume yeah it's it's yeah. massive it's massive and because all of those processes take up energy yeah um and uh yeah so Breath, breath is absolutely um, key for a number of reasons. Um, 100%. For a number 100%. of reasons. And like, you know, when I'm doing public talks and stuff like that, it's the breath that kind of brings me back to feeling grounded and just like focused to, to yeah. be able to kind of, whenever I feel my biology taking, going away from me. Yeah. So this physiological sweat, you know, mild sweating, heart rate going up, shallower breathing now i'm more conscious that actually that's just the reflex within me maybe triggered yeah. by a thought i can start to intervene earlier and do some breath and exactly. do focus breathing 100%. and the, the applicability uh, to athletes is massive you know oh yeah oh my the, gosh the applicability to everyday people is more important well more important because 100 percent. and you know the other thing i wanted to touch on quickly was was your uh mentioning of the autonomic nervous system, that fight or flight um, sympathetic state. So many of us are actually habitually living in now with being so overstimulated. And of course you can't live in one or the other. They're both constantly working. It's about which one is dominant. Um, but there's such interesting research now with companies called HeartMath and many different people about heart rate variability and how by cadence breathing, by slowing your breathing down to about 5.5 to six breaths per minute, 
you can increase your heart rate variability. You mentioned we have these devices now that we can actually see our heart rate variability. There's one called the LEAF. You can actually look at a measure of your response to stress on, uh, on a LEAF that though your functioning of your autonomic nervous system on a device, which is amazing. And by doing this cadence breathing, over time, you can actually increase your heart rate variability, meaning your body is more flexible and more resilient in times of stress. You're able to respond rather than react. Your autonomic nervous system has a lot more balance. And when that sympathetic starts to activate, which is all the time right now, right? In all these lockdowns and things, by coming back to this cadence breathing, we're actually able to have a lot more, uh, sort of control over hitting the gas pedal and going, ah, actually, I don't need to go in this rabbit hole, this spiral uh, into this crazy fight, flight, freeze state. I can actually put on the gas pedal and bring myself back to balance simply by breathing in yeah. and out 5.5 to 6 breaths per minute. And I do it to literally like a gong, this like boom, boom. No one telling me to pretend to be a cloud or you know, imagine all these vast visualizations and that has its place. But this is so simple. Just 5.5 to 6 breaths per minute can yeah. improve the balancing of your autonomic nervous system and actually bring us back from this overstimulated, overstimulated world that, that we live in that is sending us into constant overdrive. I felt it myself. It's something I'm really working on because... I now I I'm learning more and more and more and learn how actually detrimental this could be to my health like I've noticed that I have a tendency to eat quite a lot of sugar when I'm go 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 going sugar yeah. I really crave sugar and what you just said there before about that that stimulation being in that overdrive and so then wanting that sugar to to stay high you said about the insulin it makes so much sense yeah. And but that then gives me such increased motivation to go, OK, I actually don't need it. This is actually just a result of this and this and this, just like you with the sweats um, before you did a talk where you're like, oh, this is actually just a thought. This is just my brain trying to protect me because I know that I've had fear before possibly speaking in front of people. Oh, OK, mm. I know I can sort of balance this with a little bit of breathing. Ah, oh, mm. great. It, it's so motivating, isn't it, to like know to, to know more and, and have ownership of your own body take control of your biology right yeah, and that's, yeah. that's what we're all, that's what you know that's that's why we're on this podcast right now yeah. to help people know that they can yeah um and uh yeah for sure yeah. um and maybe next time what we'll do is we can talk about some of the oxygen related therapies that are really yes really very interesting yeah i'd um, love to talk about that like you know how just on that same principle of hyperoxygenating, we can talk about hyperbaric oxygen therapy, how we use it, why I put it there, yeah. how it's now being shown to um, increase longevity mm. or reduce down the, the, the biological signs of aging. Yeah, it's amazing. How it really improves the, the state in the short term and longer term. And the other type of oxygen therapy that we do, which is called ozone therapy, which is O3, you know, and mm. how that is really powerful in itself and the relationship between oxidative stress, you know, the uh, drive yeah. of inflammation, you know, the oxidative stress, which is both a necessary mechanism, but can be detrimental as well. So, and how we maintain balance for that, the role of antioxidants we hear about all the time, vitamin C, glutathione, you know, these are things that we hear about and, um, what, what do they do? They are antioxidative stress. And so I'd love to go like, you know, if you're interested in the, the yeah, part, part get, two has got to happen some, for sure. We, we get are some definitely, good, uh, we get definitely some good engagement, done. subject to engagement. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so people, I'm please, joking. please like, share and yeah, subscribe this podcast yeah, like, so, so I can, so, so I can, can do a part it. two for, with Dr. E. Cause honestly, this is, I know you haven't got too much time, but this has been awesome, honestly. Um, and I feel like we've just touched the surface, but I hope this will inspire 
more people, like we said, to go away and, you know, go on even the LMS page and use that as sort of a jumping point to to find some articles, to find some research, to delve yeah, into I mean, this stuff. Yeah, I mean, like maybe if you can attach the free immunity book that we created. Yeah, yeah, I'll pop it in relevant. the show notes. Yeah. I'll pop it in the show notes. Pop that in the show notes. I mean, in there, we've got loads of cool stuff in there, you know. Wicked. That, uh, that looks at all sorts so yeah um but yeah and uh, look at that but also yeah if you haven't already head to georgie's youtube and start <laughs> just do an exercise just do just do it yeah just give it a go 100 percent. awesome plagiarizing, plagiarizing nike there yeah uh, just go do it right okay. now. awesome well thank you so much and You're i welcome. i really look forward to part two for sure <laughs>